Hey, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Srinivas Tarigadaba. I'm at Northeastern University. My student, Nishit Goyal, was supposed to be the one presenting this paper. But I just moved in January to Northeastern University. And so my student has graduated and since left the university. And uh, I'm doing this on his behalf. So all the work here is done by my student. And what uh, we were trying to do here was to use micromachined AT cut quartz resonators for measuring stress, in situ stress, in thin films. This is the goal of this uh, particular work. And what I will do is very quickly introduce to you a little bit about quartz uh, crystal, give you a little bit of motivation for why we are using this, and then show you some results. Um, and to show that we can do this, I will use a, a test system, which is, or we are using a test system, which is based on a med glass magnetostrictive thin film. Um, and it is the precursor for doing a in-situ test. Um, quartz, as you know, crystal quartz um, is piezoelectric and under no stress conditions, of course, is, is neutral. But if you apply um, stress, either compression or tension, it will separate the, the charge centers. And obviously, you get a small amount of um, uh, charge on the two faces of the resonator. So, and you can of course use this to launch an acoustic wave inside the, the, the material and then you will be able to excite acoustic resonance inside this uh, particular crystal. Um, you can get quartz in very many different uh, um, crystal cuts, but the one that is most critical or most important is the AT cut crystal because it is temperature insensitive near room temperature. This is the reason why all of us have quartz crystals in our watches which keeps to a very stable um, reference uh, signal, essentially. And the AT cut is about 35.15 uh, degrees from uh, the Z direction of the, the crystal axis. That's what this second picture is showing. Here are the typical applications. But the most important application of the two here, I'm not going to stress on the timekeeping part, is the thickness monitor. Anybody who has done physical vapor deposition in the lab uh, nearly knows that you have a quartz crystal resonator as the thickness monitor. So our idea was that if we can actually create an in-situ stress measurement system, which is also based upon quartz resonators, then it will be a compatible system that we can actually start putting into all uh, PVD systems. So this is our motivation here in, in trying to do this. And of course, uh, there are other applications like biosensors and all, as I said, in the interest of time, I will not go over it. And here is uh, typically the, the kind of uh, uh, the dependence with, uh, with the different cuts. You can see that at around uh, room temperature, uh, the blue line uh, is pretty flat, or the green line, I should say, is very flat. And then that's, that's really what we are trying to use here. And the, um, the resonance itself is a shear mode vibration. So the bottom and the top plates kind of move in, in a shear mode as shown here, OK? All right. So what we can do, we, in our group, des designed a micromachining system, a modified plasma etching system, which allows us to very rapidly micromachine quartz. Anyone who has etched glass will realize very quickly that glass etches much slower than silicon, even though it is silicon dioxide. The bond between silicon and oxygen is very strong. And we have developed a very good etching process with this. This is not silicon that you're seeing. It is glass that we can etch. And we can actually etch it with nanometer surface roughness, which is very important um, when you're trying to make a quartz resonator. Not only that, we can also etch it with a very high aspect ratio, which means the walls are very vertical. So using this micromachining method that we have uh, in our group, we are able to etch quartz resonators, micromachined quartz resonators, as you can see here. And then what we do is eventually use focused ion beam to cut that particular resonator into a cantilever, cantilever shape. As you can see here, that cut here is the, the um, focused ion beam cut in this particular case. And so we can, in this method, uh, make resonators that go from almost uh, 70 megahertz to about 450 megahertz. That is typically, you're looking at three microns thick quartz. So we micro machine 100 micron quartz down to about three microns using this RIE process. And we are still able to get a very nice um, resonance peak in this case. We don't lose any of our quality factor. And so we can maintain in the several thousands. So our FQ factors are within factor of five of the ideal limit for these. So here's the problem that uh, I wanted to first say to you before we go on to everything else. 
Um, if you will use a quartz resonator while you're doing an in-situ deposition, obviously the deposition of mass is going to cause the frequency to shift, right? And that frequency shift will be much larger than because of stress. So obviously we will be overwhelmed in our effect because of mass deposition. So we realized this very quickly. So we wanted to overcome this problem and we wanted to come up with a solution. And that's really the focus of this work to some extent. And the, the ideas for this came from the work that was done a long time ago in the 1960s and 1970s, uh, where people were applying stresses in the plane of quartz, and they measured it as the angle of the stress is rotated around the 360 degrees, as you can see here. So this particular top picture is for out of plane, and then they, they created this by rotating the quartz and measuring out of plane, and looking at the degrees and then looking at what the effect is. What happens, you see here, is that for different angles, you will get a different kind of frequency shift in this particular case. And this is very useful for us to know that there are different angles at which you might get a positive and a negative frequency shift depending upon how you apply the stress. Why do we want to use this? Obviously, what we want to do is have two cantilevers that are cut in different angles so that when you apply the stress, it's in the two different directions. So the stress effect will add when you subtract, but the mass always reduces the frequency of the resonator. So when you actually will do the subtraction, it will essentially end up uh, uh, subtracting out. That's really what we want to use. And of course, stress control in any MEMS and any uh, device, um, but even electronic devices, is very critical. So I, I mean, there is a large uh, motivation to have an in-situ stress measurement system. And that's really uh, all we, we were looking at. And if you look at most of the current methods, you use either curvature measurement system and use Tony's formula, or you can use X-ray diffractions. These are all ex situ methods and very difficult. And you can do this while you're developing a process once or twice, but you don't have a control every time. So our idea was to really create a system that just basically um, goes into our existing PVD systems. That, that really is what we were looking at. Here is the, very quickly the fabrication process. We use nickel mask, we etch down, and then as I said, we cut the cantilevers at different angles. We know the angle of our, our, our quartz, um, and then we, we are able to cut that. Um, and then we use a modified dual inline package. In this particular case, place the, the resonator array in there, and then um, essentially um, end up with the, the resonators, as you can see here. So we can cut one resonator, like in this particular case, in this angle. The other one, if we want, we can cut, or we can leave it uncut. So there are different ways by which we can actually use uh, the resonator, in this particular case, for, um, for uh, compensation. Now, obviously, before we wanted to do the mass deposition and, and testing, we wanted to make sure that we can test this effect and show to ourselves that this effect is actually possible. So in order for us to do this, we have deposited a magnetostrictive med glass layer. This is the black colored layer, which is a magnetic material. Um, and what we do, therefore, is that we can apply a magnetic field, and using the magnetostriction, we can apply the force along the length of the cantilever. And that's really what we are trying to do here. And of course, as you apply the, the cantilever, the, the unimorph is going to bend out of plane. And as it bends out of plane, you can look for the frequency shift. And we can do this at different directions and see if we are getting the effect that we are looking for. And this is really just a, a schematic of the transduction method where we are going from the magnetic field uh, into a frequency shift mode here as a function of the strain that is applied. And just to be also sure that we actually are seeing that this effect is independent, so that means the frequency shift is because of the strain, the bending of the cantilever, we actually put the cantilever under a vibrometer and also look for the deflection of the cantilever itself so that we are sure in, in two ways. Um, and that's really what you're seeing here. It's, this is the optical measurement. So that means what we have got is the laser, Doppler uh, vibrometer laser is focused at the tip, and we apply magnetic field uh, in both positive and negative directions. Um, and then as we apply that, we look for the de deflection of the, the cantilever from which we can estimate the strain. And then we can also calculate the D33 coefficient in terms of parts per million per Oersted. So what we have done here is um, 
it's clear when you do this, this kind of testing, the frequency shift is much more sensitive when you actually cut it into a cantilever. If you don't cut it into a cantilever, the sensitivity is much lower in, this, in, in the particular case. So now what we, we have in this particular um, uh, graph here is uh, essentially a superposition of the optical measurement and the frequency shift measurement. Okay, and those are the two measurements that we are doing here. Here is the, the strain in the cantilever as measured with, an optic, uh, with a laser Doppler vibrometer. And you, know, you can see that it, it follows very nice straight line in the, in the linear region um, in terms of the stress applied. And then you can also superimpose the frequency shift as we are applying the magnetic field as well. So what this shows is that clearly the frequency shift is correlated to the deflection of the cantilever. That really is, is the, um, the main thing that we were looking at. And of course, as I said to you, we've cut cantilevers in two different directions, one perpendicular 90 degrees um, to, to the other one. Um, and then you can see in this particular case that in the two cases, in one case the frequency shifts in the positive direction and the other case in the negative direction. We can also do this particular measurement uh, by actually applying simply the magnetic field on the same resonator in two up perpendicular orthogonal directions. And in this particular experiment, you can also see the same effect. In one direction, it goes up, the frequency shift. In the other direction, it goes down. The point of all of this is exactly what I said, which is we wanted the stress to have a different effect for different angles, so that ultimately when we are doing the mass measurements, we are able to subtract the mass effect out and add the stress effect out. That's really the, the, the ultimate goal. So at this point, I will wind up this work. I mean, we have, what we have shown so far with the med glass effect, one of the, the advantages of doing it with med glass was that the mass was already on there when we deposited the med glass. But we were able to do the two different directions and see the effect. So actually, now we are setting this up in a um, uh, sputtering chamber with the, the two resonators going in, and we will be uh, getting these results probably in the next three months or so with my new students. So, um, and we'll be um, you know, looking towards having this as a thin film in situ stress measurement system. If you actually do the calculations of this and you actually look at the sensitivity of the device, you will be ultimately able to look at 1.17 uh, hertz per kilopascal of stress and these particular resonators with their Q factors running in into uh, about 5,000 or higher, we should be able to do maybe up to two hertz to three hertz of frequency resolution very easily and with some effort into down to one hertz, which means that we can actually resolve in situ stresses of the order of kilopascals if we are able to deal with the mass. That problem still remains. We have not shown you that we can do the, the mass compensation as well yet. Uh, but we'll see with our first measurements, which will be coming out soon. All right, thank you.